<laughs> All right. This is our starter base. Um, hopefully this gives you an idea of kind of the style we're going for in, uh, in this city. Uh, draw in quite a lot of inspiration from brutalism. Uh, I know that's a that's a term that people like to throw around, but um, basically it's functionality over style. Uh, and so you see it a lot in real life. You get a lot of like concrete buildings that are just not very ornate. They just have uh, concrete pillars or steel pillars or whatever, and then just um, dividers to to separate the levels. Uh, and, and and so. On my trip recently, I, I went overseas to Melbourne uh, in Australia and took a whole bunch of photos uh, of, of the city, you know, and kind of the, the style you see. And it's a pretty interesting city. Like, it's got a lot of old architecture, but also a lot of new stuff. And so this here, this part of the building, uh, I, saw, I saw a building along the coast in Melbourne uh, which had, like, this cascading brutalist style and so kind of tried to add that into the game which is cool uh, and around here we have like this little emergency fire escape exit staircase it's not the safest I'll admit there's no safety rails so when you're walking up it it um yeah <laughs> when you're walking up it you know, you're very, you could very easily just fall off the edge here. But um, it's good because I haven't actually built the elevator, which is on the other side. So this is my main point of going up and down the building for right now. And then on this side, uh, I think this is my own design as well. Uh, I kind of wanted to... <clears throat> In a lot of old school architecture, you see these very grand windows uh, with like floor to ceiling, like stained glass, and they got like one big one and then like two or three smaller ones on the side. Uh, so for this, I wanted to incorporate like a brutalist feel into it. So in in, in old architecture, you have like very uh, elegant corners and like curves and stuff but in this it's kind of just very rigid and blocky which suits the game very well I, you know it is a blocky game um but also you know we got one massive window from floor to ceiling all the way to, to almost the top of the building and then you see down here there's kind of like a two on the side that are slightly smaller than that but also there is a window behind it and, yeah, I, I wanted to go extravagant with the block choice because it's not a very diverse color palette, I must admit. It's all stone and andesite with a little bit of copper and, and, and iron here and there. So to, to keep it in the same color but also kind of flex a little, I used lodestones as like a... A center point block which is like whoa look at that uh, which I thought was cool let's get a little closer and on this side got to sleep hold on sleepy sleep on this side I originally had something very different uh, you might have seen it in the video I might have edited it out I don't know, but there was like uh, kind of this style, or well, maybe it's on this side, this style of um, building, you know, very clear layers, uh, but instead of just going straight up, they kind of popped out every layer by like one or two blocks, and so it started off here, but as it goes up, it would curve out. And then in, but I, I liked it, but it wasn't suiting the building. 
very much. So I tore it down and decided to put an elevator shaft in here. And this one is 100% my design. Uh, I tried... I tried to kind of base it on real life. You know, you, you see a lot of buildings that have an, an elevator shaft or um, like in, 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 in big houses, there'll be like multi, multi-storied multi houses. There'd be like a staircase and then at the top that have, it would be a relatively flat building, but then there'd be this one tiny little room uh, which would be like the elevator maintenance shaft, but um, or the st the staircase maintenance shaft. So tried to incorporate that into the building. Uh, sadly, the elevator is not functional yet because I don't have honey blocks. But uh, this is based off a design from Azumavoid. I no one knows how to say his name. Um, we hit the note block and it. And it opens the trapdoor, so you have honey block here and here with a, a water stream with salt sand in it that'll push you up. And so you push into this corner of the honey blocks and it'll shoot you up, but then the trapdoor stops you from going up. So if you want to go to another level, you hit the note block, uh, you right click the note block, and it'll open the trapdoor and you can go up to the next level. And you do that till you get to the level you want to be at, which I thought was awesome. Um, yeah, and so to incorporate that, because it's a very narrow design, you see the redstone still on the outside, to try and incorporate that to the build on the outside, I thought these would be like AC vents or air conditioning vents, which is pretty cool, um, and you've got like the, the fan ventilation shaft, um, along the side of the elevator there and I let's say this is just for airflow so it pumps fresh air in here and then it comes out the copper or the other way around I don't know and then it comes up and over into the fans on the roof which is pretty sick I try to build everything with a purpose so it's not just like a random thing uh, the only thing that's probably really random in this building is probably this copper line here. I'd say it's power, but it's coming from a, a fan on the top. And it's it's just goes into this. So, But it looks cool. Not everything has to be functional. It's just nice if it is. Um, yeah. So that's the elevator shaft. And also... Uh, we put like a, a ladder on this side. So, you know, in the case of an emergency or, you know, you're not allowed access into the building or whatever and the maintenance dude needs to get into the shaft, he can just come climb up the side. This is, I saw this in B00's, I think it's a Hermitcraft episode. He builds the silos and he had this this scaffolding design on the side, which I thought was awesome. So I put it in. And then we have some in rods and levers to to act as lights so that, you know, the maintenance dude can see what he's maintaining. Always useful. Very practical. And it and it looks nice. Like it's a nice nice aesthetic. And then on the other side, on this side of the shaft, we have redstone torches for the levels. Uh so I don't know, maybe there's a helicopter or something flying over at night and they need to be able to see where the, where the building is and, and like how tall it is so they can use the redstone torches as a point of reference. And you'll also notice that there is the observer and this um, wall. So I like to think of this as like this is the electrical running up and down the building all in like a nice tidy spot and and then this is the plumbing so often in maintenance shafts and in, in real buildings um, or elevator shafts they also use it as utilities as well 
so there'll be there's, there'll be space for the elevator for sure, and that's the point of getting up and down the building. But it also you, they run electrical and plumbing and stuff through there as well, so to not disrupt the rest of the floor. Um, and it's design, it's like a practical combination of two things, which is awesome. So I tried to incorporate that. And yeah, currently doesn't go anywhere. That's cool. Just coming out of here. We might need to build like a, a generator or something up here. Because we got the fans. And we got whatever that is. And then like the AC and stuff. But um, yeah, currently the water isn't... Maybe the water is being pumped from an underground reservoir or something. Let's let's say that. That, that makes more sense. Um, but the electrical isn't coming from anywhere, so we might need to build like a generator here or something. We've also got a radio tower, or a satellite tower, connects us to the internet, very important. Obviously there's no internet in Minecraft, but it, it's important for a, a modern building. So we added it, and it looks cool, which is cool. Uh, yeah... I think that's all the sides. Yep. So let's go inside now. Um, I find design designing floors really difficult. Like basic wooden floors don't excite me at all. But also, you you see a whole bunch of patterns and stuff, and it's like, whoa, that's way too much. So I wanted to use cobble to fit with the with the stone theme. But I don't like the cobble texture. Like if we... I wonder if I've got any. Let's go find some cobblestone. This is what I would have done in the building over here. But if you see, I didn't use cobblestone. And that's because this texture isn't nice for a floor. I don't like it. So what I used instead is a furnace. Which still has that same kind of feel, but it's softer, and it's tidier, and it also has this border here, which I really like on floor patterns. So, all of these are furnaces. And then these are blast furnaces as well. Again, it has a border, but also it has this really nice stone texture that you don't see anywhere else except for blast furnaces, which is awesome. I think the closest thing is this block here, so it's nice. And then for a point of color difference, because it's very gray, I used smithing tables, which is a nice dark block, good for floors. And then right here, I used a lodestone as well. So we have two lodestones in the building, this one and this one. And that's kind of just a flex, really. Nothing special. But I do like the top texture of this and that texture in the middle there. It, this one adds quite a bit of depth to an otherwise very flat looking build. And this adds a lot of like bright grey. Like this is the brightest grey I can think of and this is even brighter than that, which is nice. Got to sleep. Uh, yeah, and then we use redstone lamps on the floor for some lighting. And again, it's kind of the same use of blocks here. Uh, some smithing tables, smooth stone, furnaces, blast furnaces. I used a little bit of chiseled stone brick because it's... Uh, just to switch it up a little. Still in the same color palette and stuff, very nice. And then in the center, this is temporary, we have an ancient debris. I want to make it a netherite block. So kind of at the start of every episode, except for this one, I'm probably going to do some ancient debris mining. Maybe just like a stack of beds or something. And eventually we'll have a netherite block here. Again, just to flex, because flexing is cool. Oh. Uh, yeah, so there's the floor. 
I don't really know what we're going to do with this space. I thought maybe an aquarium would be cool. And I can get like... I can have different layers. So I can put hostile uh, fish mobs in here. And then like axolotls and stuff in there. And then like tropical fish in there. It'd be cool. Because it's not, it's not a very practical space. I mainly built this space for the look on the outside. So it'd be cool to have a use for this. I might have to switch out the scaffold for um, glass. But I could always just put trapdoors on the outside so I keep the yellow. And yeah, I've kind of, I've moved all my stuff from the OG spot way over yonder. And so now that's inside. And... Temp yeah, everything here is temporary until I kind of figure out what kind of design I want to have on the inside. Um, yeah. Let me... Ah, oh, there's one more thing I want to talk about. You'll notice I used a lot of walls in this build. Uh, and that's because if I didn't use walls... This would be incredibly flat. Let me, let me go find a good vantage point. If there were no walls here, this would all just be one solid bar. It wouldn't look very cool. Even without shaders, it still looks kind of interesting. Um, because it adds like a little bit of depth. We're still in the in the one block kind of space, so it's really difficult to add depth, which is very, which is important for an interesting building. So we used walls instead because they're not quite a full block, and it just it gives a little bit of shape to the to the top here, and you see it also on the wall here to distinguish the pillars. From the, the wall uh, and it's also used here in these pillars like there's a little trick that I learned also from beat ups um, which is to use different shades of glass to add this little bit of the wall here so from a distance, you can't really see, well you can if you look closely, but you know, if you're not focusing on it, you don't really see the, the stained glass. And the wall looks far bigger on this side than it does this side. And that's because of the stained glass windows. So it adds just a little more size to the wall and also a little more shape like this is a more circular shape it, it would otherwise be very square and so it's nice so I use that quite a lot in this build and it's tricky because you don't want to go overboard with it because otherwise it looks really messy and you have to get the right shades of glass as well or else it's way too obvious. But this side also uses quite a lot of that technique as well. So up here, you can kind of see the walls are connecting. And that's because we used the stained glass. But from a distance, you probably wouldn't be able to see that, right? You don't really see that at all. Unless you zoom in a lot, and then it's noticeable. Uh, yeah, and over here as well, uh, yeah, so it's a way to build in a very small space, adding depth and shape as well, and even on the inside I did it as well, up here. Now, I want to say, this build is not complete, we still need to build this elevator, which is important, and we still need to do an, do an interior. But, I say this is a starter base, but this is more like a house. So, normally people would put all their chests and stuff in here for their storage, 
and that's what I'm doing currently, right now. But I plan to build an entirely different area for my sorting system and my chests and my storage and all of that. Probably over here, actually. And, and have this as like a trophy room and a bedroom and all of that stuff. So you might have noticed already, but we've we've put the dragon egg in here. This is temporary. Maybe. I might never get around to building a monument for it, but it's there. And so yeah, we put all our trophies in here and stuff and like exotic animals and uh armor stands to showcase all our trims and stuff. So yeah, this will be more like a personal collection room more than a like a base of operations, if that makes sense. Which brings me to my next point. Now that we have this build and all of our stuff is moved from over here, kind of all that's left is just random stuff. Like this, we could move this in. And get rid of the bones. Yeah, now that this is all gone, we need to revisit this um, this notice board and figure out what we're doing next. Let me just go ahead and put my armor. Noise. So, I haven't enchanted my gear. But I have upgraded it, so we can cross off most of this. Yeah, well, actually, all of this. Very nice. So we still need to enchant our netherite, because it's getting pretty low, so I need to mend it up. Uh, I might do that off camera or in a time lapse, because that's honestly a pretty boring task. It's just a lot of trading and, and XP farming. I have this, we've done this, it's not the best, but it's functional, so we can cross this off the list as well. We've defeated the Ender Dragon, so we can cross this off the list. We have built a starter house, so we can cross this off the list as well. Very good, very nice. And... We have done this, but I might change it. This this will be an ongoing process, this one. So, we need to figure out what we're doing next. We need to enchant our netherite stuff. And we also need some more goals. So. As you can see, I've kind of already made a start on it. I've been shaping out the land a little bit. Spawn proofing it. Clearing it out, making it smoother. So I need to do this for the whole island. I've also been digging out here as well, working on the river, um, being connected up to the other side. This is this took me like three hours just to do this tiny bit here, and I think I need to reevaluate my plan. Uh, yeah talk about that a little later on but that's going to come all the way through here and connect up over here so let's add terraforming to the list uh, and it's a huge project and it's going to take a very long time so let's go terraforming This will be a gradual thing, like the netherite that I do kind of every episode. Uh, and if you're interested, let me know and I'll record it for you. But otherwise, I might just do that off camera. Because it's huge and repetitive. Uh, it might get boring quick. The next thing that we need to do is expand some farms. But... When I wrote that, I was kind of just meaning this pumpkin and melon farm. Which, might I add, is producing a lot now. More than I'll ever need in a 
single player survival world, which is very nice. Very nice. Not complaining. I think I have, yeah, lots and lots. But there are other farms here which are doing okay, but I kind of wish would do more, like the iron farm and the villager farm, or what else have we got? The sheep farm. Uh, so I need to upgrade these, slash build new ones that can facilitate the huge projects that we're going to be doing. I also need to build a mob farm, which will give us bones and gunpowder and rotten flesh and string. Very useful. And if I want to, I can change it so that it's just a creeper farm or something later on. Uh, what else? We also need to build a sand duper and gravel duper slash concrete, you know, all gravity block duper. So that I can build TNT and TNT minecarts so that I can blow up this river. Uh, like I said, it took me three hours to do that one small chunk and I have to do all of this, which is a lot. And I could do it myself if I had a beacon, but also it's more fun if we just blow everything up, right? So that's what I'm going to do. So, let us go back to the notice board and change this a little bit. Now, this also leads me on to my next issue, which is zoning. So, in a city, you wouldn't have a residential building right next to an industrial factory. That just doesn't typically happen at least in well-planned cities. And that is because of a thing that most councils call zoning. So I have to zone out where I want certain things to go. Now keep in mind, this, is, this island is all for farms, so uh, it's not that big of an issue. But if I want it to be a very immersive and realistic city... I kind of have to keep in mind what I put where. Cities have loading zones called, or like, infrastructure for importing goods and exporting goods, which is a dock. So I'm going to leave this area here for a dock, and I'm going to use that area for a sorting system. And kind of the, the lore in my head is we have ships coming from the sea over here, and they come inland, and they dock here and unload their goods that supply the city. And from here, we have trains, which I might do like an underground subway, maybe? Or a monorail. A monorail would be pretty sick, I think. Or maybe a combination of both, uh, which goes around the city. And you can use that to get to the different districts. And so typically, a city will have uh, commercial and industrial areas, like this one. They'll have a CBD, as a central business district, uh, which I will use for villager trading slash missions, like I talked about in the last one. And they'll also have residential which I might leave on the outskirts of the city. But the, the, it'll kind of indicate where I build my farms as well. Because you wouldn't have like an iron factory, a smeltery or whatever you call it, next to a, a house that people sleep in. Yeah? So, once again, back to the notice board. Zoning... So I think these this is enough tasks for us to tackle for like the next five episodes. And we can revisit this board anytime we need. So I'm going to go ahead and 
probably time lapse these two things and, and I'll see you once I'm done. Let's have a quick look at the end result of the mob farm. It is not decorated, um, but it will be decorated probably in the next episode, or the next two, but it's already pumping out the results. Let's have a cheat cam look at it. Now I didn't build it high enough because I didn't have enough string, so there's, as you can see, a lot of mobs spawning around here, but... There's also a lot of mobs spawning, or was spawning, in there. Now imagine all of these mobs as well being in there by just going a little higher for my AFK point. We're utilizing the spawn circles that are uh, based around the player's position. So I think it's like a 20 block radius sphere thingy that mobs can't spawn in. But then it's like 128 blocks radius in which they can spawn in and so you can see the edge here of all the mobs so yeah need to move it up a little and spawn proof the the ground and it'll be at maximum efficiency whoa look at this so the way this farm works obviously i've just explained the spawning but also um these platforms have a light level of zero as you can see so mobs are allowed to spawn on those and we have a timer up here with a comparator. So the comparator is looking at the lever and saying, ha, huh, this has a full redstone signal of 11. Let me compare this signal with this signal. And currently this signal is not on. So it's allowing the power to pass through. But as soon as it's powered on, it turns off. And while this is on, the comparator won't allow a signal to pass through. So basically it's a big clock for a signal to be sent down the tower by observers. So underneath this block here, I have an observer observing the block state above it. And some people use droppers, but because we're not dispensing anything, I don't need that. I just need a dropper with nothing in it. And when the dropper gets powered, it changes its block state, which the observer picks up and sends a signal down to this one. And this releases a water bucket, or picks up the water, like so. And that follows all the way down to the very bottom. And so in the period where there's no water on, this, on the platforms, mobs spawn. See? Like that, and like that, and like that. And then the water is powered on and it washes them away down in here and they get pushed into these campfires. The campfires, the soul campfires do a little more damage than regular campfires so we're using that and they get picked up by the hopper system which can be expanded further. Um, I like this farm because it's got an off switch so if we're making way too much we can turn it off which is great. Uh, but also we can just leave it on and it'll passively uh, every now and again spawn mobs. And if I really need like a lot of gunpowder or bones or something, I can go up to an AFK platform up here and, you know, we can see the results here. Now that it's daytime, no mobs can spawn elsewhere as well. So we'll have more on the platforms like so. Now, this is something that I need to fix. This shouldn't be too big of an issue. So yeah, this is the mob farm. Very good. So this will be our supply of 
uh, gunpowder. So let's fly down. Look at that. What a lovely, beautiful sound. And these are all the drops that we get. You just need to be careful not to be seen by creepers because they can blow up and destroy it. So, I'm going to finish it off with a little bit of glass if we have any. Alright. Pretty much safe at this point. And I've only been AFKing for like 10 minutes and we've already got about a stack of gunpowder, which is great. Perfect for our needs. Alright, I think that's a pretty hefty amount for this episode. Pretty good dent. We've built the starter base. We built a mob farm. We revisited our plans. I'm going to go ahead and enchant my tools because, well, and mend them up because they need it. Uh, yeah. Can't wait to uh, build an exterior for this so it's not ugly to look at. <laughs> but until the next time, have a great week, month, however long it takes, and I'll see you in the next episode.